Okay guys, so on my last video, um, I mentioned that if you like ask me questions about my life, then I will gladly come back and answer. So, okay, so on that video, there are two comments. One from Nugget saying, I love the Norios too. Yes, gang, they're everything, you already know. Um, but one of my, like, most loyal supporters, Iris Johnson Young, she commented and said, I'd like to know more about you. I'm good with whatever you would like to share. Where are you from? Do you have sisters or brothers? What is your relationship like with your parents? And how did you acquire those scars? Okay. Jeez. Okay. I'm gonna have to, like, brief you on the scar situation because, like, they're all, like, huge, huge, huge stories in themselves. But let me, like, do these questions in order. Okay, so the first question was, where are you from? I'm from the Six. Six God right here. Uh, Toronto, Canada. I was born in Oshawa, Ontario, which is in Canada, but, like just a little bit outside I think it's east I don't even know where it is but like I was raised in Toronto pretty much my whole life um yeah I think when we were like when I was like one my mom had moved to the city so yeah Toronto I don't really like it here I'm gonna be honest like it gets cold hot days still tend to be fucking windy people are like either super super nice to the point that it's just like it's cringeworthy or they're really 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 conservative to the point where it's just like what the fuck is up your ass i belong in new york but that's a different story for a different day i live in toronto canada okay do you have any sisters or brothers i have no sisters i have zero sisters but i have four brothers so yeah i think i have mentioned that in another video way back but yeah four brothers no sisters people okay y'all need to stop with this people keep asking me if i like girls that chapter of my life is closed i'm straight okay it's cool if you do but don't assume based on my appearance my mannerisms that i'm lesbian because or bisexual because i'm not i thought i was but i'm not yeah and i have like more masculine mannerisms things like that i just i've always chilled with guys because they're like drama free and well not drama free but they have less drama than females i notice and yeah i had brothers like lots of brothers so although i didn't like grow up with them in the house like all the time with me like i definitely bonded i always had like some sort of video game console um the first one was an n64 um yeah four brothers no sisters straight tomboy here i'm like the girliest tomboy you'll ever come across but i'm not bi I don't like girls, so y'all can stop wondering, okay? <laughs> Straight up. What is your relationship like with your parents? Okay, um, let's go with parent. I don't know my dad. Um, the one time I ever actually, like, spent time with him, he almost killed me, handed me an O. Henry bar, and I was like, at least I was like four, but I was smart enough to know that, like, I can't have peanuts, so I was like, yo, I can't eat this. And then, ever since then, my mom would be like, you know what's funny? Like, now that I'm looking back on it, I'm kind of cheesed because, like, I low-key wish I had opted to spend more time with my dad, but, like, my mom was the type, she would, like, guilt me into, like, not wanting him around. You know, she would say, like, oh, he didn't show up for your birthday, he didn't even call. You know, like, I mean, I guess, sure, it shows he didn't really care, but, like, I never really, like, although I had the option to choose to see him, I technically didn't have the option. Like, she, would, she wouldn't set it up that way. And, like, I would be in, like, so much... I would get so much shit for saying that I, I wanted him around because she didn't, you know? There's, a, like, there's like a lot. But, yeah, it's fine. Like, he really didn't care. At the time, I was just like, it's cool. Like, if he doesn't want to be here, I don't want him in my life. But now I'm just, like, given my relationship with my mom, I kind of want my dad in my life. But it's whatever. I don't... I don't know the odds of that actually ever happening. But, yeah, my, like, the relationship with my mom is terrible to say. Um, she obviously doesn't like the fact that I'm talking about what I've been put through. Um, she doesn't like the fact that I don't agree with the way she's raised me. Although, like, I couldn't, I've only been set up for failure <laughs> based off of what she's done for me. Like, sure, like, I, I learned basic respect, things like that. But it's mostly out of fear. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the way my mom raised me. I don't like the fact that she used 
my existence to try to like guilt me into being like a, like she's one of those like oh i had a great life before you kids like y'all ruined my body like i you know where i'd be in the world if i didn't have to take care of you you and you like i don't i think I, I used to love my mom out of just like fear and out of like i'm supposed to have a mom like everybody has a mom like it's fine i'm still like it still hurts me <sighs> fuck it still hurts me that I can't, like, call her and tell her, like, you know, I had a bad day, like, I need advice, I need to talk about shit. Like, it's just not like that. Um, and it is what it is, like, she's naturally, she's just not happy that I ran away from home, but I had to run away because of the abuse. Um, this scar, ugh, it's, it's such a long, long story. Oh, fuck, I didn't want to cry. I don't even have like a tissue nearby. But basically, this scar. Oh, okay, so this, my mom. Wait, where is it? So I don't know if you can tell, I have a scar under my eye. This one, this one was my fault. I threw a bottle at one of my exes and it hit me in the face. I don't. <laughs> it's actually really, it was kind of comical. Like I threw a bottle, a vodka bottle at a wall hoping to break it and then it like bounced off the corner of the wall and hit me in the face stupid stupid but not that one the one that's like this one here i was young like four or five and it was my little brother's first birthday um and she had covered his cake i think she had made the cake herself i'm not even i don't remember it at this point there was a cake for him right my mom had put all of these M&Ms all over the cake and it wasn't like covering like it, the cake wasn't completely covered in M&Ms but they were like dispersed throughout the surface and I don't know where she went she probably went to change him or do something like she went bye bye for like five ten minutes and I was left with this cake so I wanted to try one of these M&M Smarties I think I think they were Smarties because like I don't know I just never had like I never had like a lot of sugar in my life because like things like chocolate, tomato, citrus, like they'll give me like rashes. I'm like super sensitive to shit like that, among other things, but like those are the main main ones. And I was just like so stoked on like these M&Ms. I, I ate one and then I ate another one and I ate another one until they were all gone. And when she came back, she was mad. I don't remember her yelling. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember her yelling per se, but I do remember being like, oh, there's so many details to everything in my life. It's just, it's exhausting, but it's whatever. I feel like I've spent so much energy telling the wrong people. Like I can never like muster up the right energy to tell it on the platform that matters. But fucking long story short, we had a balcony in the, in the apartment we were living in. Um, and like the table with the cake was like next to the balcony door. The wooden part of the door was open and it was just like the glass screen door part that was like exposed so I don't remember why or how <sighs> okay so like fun fact um when I would be like punished or whatever if things were like really really bad like and my mom was just like cheesed at me for whatever reason she'd make me sit on the balcony winter summer I had to sit out there for like 10 20 minutes I want to tell you like after you get your ass beat you don't want to be sitting on a fucking freezing cold balcony in like just your PJs in Canada I hate Canada I hate the winters here but I think she was in the process of telling like that was like where I would go like that was my timeout zone on the balcony no matter what time of year it was so she like I think she told me to like go out to the balcony <laughs> But instead of like just waiting for me to go through the door myself, she pushed me and I went through the glass door and I had like the, I got that scar. And I think for the, the you know, at school, at church, I think I, I, I had to tell people like I, I ran to a wall or a tree or something like that. But like, yo, you guys wonder how I get so many acting gigs without any professional training. Like I had to lie my entire life so that people wouldn't call child protective services <sighs> like that was like my biggest fear because like one day randomly oh my god one day randomly I went I was going to this school 
It's actually like not even far from where I'm living now. But like I, I went to this some elementary school and then I don't know what happened, what tipped them off, but like one day randomly like a social worker came and they were like, okay, like tell me about your mom, like what happens when you get punished, like what happens, you know, X, Y, Z, like all these scenarios basically just trying to figure out like if I'm being abused at home. I lied <laughs> and so I passed the test. But my older brother was like just older than me. I have like three older brothers, one younger brother. My older brother who's like just before me, he told the truth and they took him. Um, it, like years later he, you know, he was back with us but like they took him and I forget where I was going with this. But like yeah, like I just, lying is just a part of my life to save my ass, to save my mom's ass. Like I was just always afraid that like I would get taken away from her. Although she would be like abusive to me, like at least to my mom, my only parent. And she was a good parent, like most of the time. It's just things got hectic sometimes. Fast forward, I'm like 22. You know what? No. Fast forward to when I'm 16, 15, 15, because I spent my 16th birthday in the hospital, going to rehab. <laughs> um. Okay, so I'm like 15 or whatever, and. We belong to this housing group for like, you know, poor or people, poor or people. Um, so like we have this housing establishment where like they'll kind of do like this summer camp, day camp thing for like the kids who belong to the housing cooperation. And there was this International Women's Day March and it still happens every year. But this was like, I think this, this was like the first year I went. The first and only year I went. So we did like this big march thing and then like we would end up at Ryerson University where there would be like all kinds of stands, tables with buttons that you could get. Um, and I wanted free buttons that said things like, you know, no more bombing, feminism for all, no means no. Like I just, I love that shit. So my mom told my brother, like he was my chaperone, bodyguard, whatever, the one with autism. He's very functional, but under strict rule and he had consequences too if he didn't follow those rules so um i wanted to stay and like collect buttons but like the time that like my mom had given him a specific time to bring me home for whatever reason just because you know i can only have so much fun so he he wanted me to go he wanted you know he wanted me to leave with him because, you know, he didn't want to get in trouble, just like, you know, I, I didn't want to get in trouble, but I figured, like, it's not a big deal, she's not going to make too much of a fuss about it. I'm just going to stay and collect a couple more buttons, and he waited, brought me home, he didn't say, like, two words to me the whole way home, because, you know, I figured, like, he was scared, so I didn't really try to instigate too many conversations, it was fine. <sighs> we get home, he says, like, she didn't want to leave, you know, I tried to get her to leave, and everything he said, like, some people are just not tactful, and I don't blame my brother for this at all because, like, you know, it is what it is. People with autism lack s certain social skills, and that's completely understandable. So, like, he wasn't tactful when he said, like, she didn't want to, she wasn't ready to go, you know? It was just like, oh, she was, like, the way he said it, I can't, I don't remember the exact sentence, but the way he said it made it seem, like, so much worse than what it was. And this, like... It's funny now that like I don't I'm happy not having hair because that was like the punishment of the century. Like if I did something wrong, my mom would cut off my hair, cut out my extensions, cut off whatever wonderful hairstyle I had going for me at that time. She would just cut it off for I don't know. So apparently I'm acting too grown or some shit. Like she would just cut my hair off. So I had braids. I had box braids in. <laughs> And I remember putting my hand, like, she was, she made me sit down, like, I didn't even change my clothes yet, nothing. Like, we just come in, like, oh, she didn't want to leave with me. She was like, okay, sit. Got some scissors, started cutting my hair. So I, I, like, I wanted to just feel, like, if she was cutting my real hair with, um, with, along with the fake hair. And I don't, I don't even know if she, like, hit me with the scissors or like I don't know if it was an accident or on purpose but like I pulled my hand down and I could see inside of it and <sighs> sorry I'm sorry you guys I'm sorry I didn't mean to start crying so I could see inside my hand and within like two minutes it started bleeding like mad and so just like what she did with oh god my makeup's starting to look like shit oh my god just like what she did with um 
the cut under my eye. I think I told you guys about the imaginary thong situation with the baseball bat. What she does is she would like use crazy glue to try to just seal the scar or seal the wound just so that like it would heal closed and it wouldn't be like a giant gash which obviously doesn't work if it needs stitches but you can only make up so many stories to like avoid conflict with authorities so like she didn't want to have to send me to a doctor or a hospital so she would try to stitch it up herself with some crazy glue she tried that with this but like it kept breaking open and every time I would get my ass beat she would be like, okay, go take a shower. And so she finally cut off all my hair. Not all my hair, but like all my extensions. And I'm bleeding all over the place. So she's like, okay, go get in the shower. This was the worst day of my life. <laughs> like there have been so many times where she's hit me and I've been bleeding all over the place. And like, I'll go take a shower and that'd be the end of it. Like she's done, you know? But <laughs> this time I got in the shower rinsing 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 all the blood off like seeing like the f the bottom of the bathtub like full of my own blood like you guys when i tell you the amount of times i've seen my own blood there's so many stories there's so many stories but like i've seen puddles of like my like uh, it's beside the point it's beside the point so i'm in the shower rinsing off all this blood and then the curtain she pulls the curtain and she's holding the scissors like this like and they were like full-size scissors, but she was just like, I don't remember what she was saying, but bear threats. Bear threats like, yo, don't try me. I brought you into this world. I could happily take you out. <laughs> like, I've stared death in the face too many times for the idea of it to scare me now. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's actually fucked up. <laughs> but, oh, my makeup was so nice. <laughs> my makeup was so nice today. Fuck. Uh, yeah, there's like, I can't even save this look anymore. <laughs> But yeah, so a bunch of threats, and like, while I'm bleeding, while I, I can't feel my hand, she's like staring into my soul, telling me like, I feel like this is when she snapped, like, she was, she, she would have killed me if I had like, blinked or said s the wrong thing. Like, I, uh, it's, it's fucked up. Like, you guys, my mom was my first bully, like, before I even knew what fucking bullying, cyberbullying, any of that bullshit was. Like, before I was taught it at school, I was experiencing it at home. Ugh. And, like, people wonder why I'm such a bitch and why, like, being mean doesn't phase me. Why I can say some hurtful shit to someone and go on about my life and, like, sleep peacefully knowing that, like, I hurt someone. It's just, I was raised to be, like, a monster and I, I can't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to, to say about that. Look at this makeup. Oh my god, look at this bullshit. Okay. Fuck, let me just finish this fucking story. <laughs> I really can't wear makeup when I talk about my life. Like, it's fucked. It's fucked. <laughs> so after she's, she threatens me some more, and I'm, like, confined in the shower, like, vulnerable, naked, like, it's all kinds of horrifying. She leaves whatever, I'm supposed to finish showering, and I get out, I'm still bleeding. Like, I won't, like, it won't stop bleeding. And I rinse it in the sink, I'm like, I remember so vividly, put my hand under the cold water, and I could see, like, these white the lines in my hand. Those are my tendons. She cut through, like, she completely cut through the, the tendon on the middle finger and, like, half of this one and half of this one for, like, these two fingers. So, oh god, this makeup. So, like, I couldn't lift my finger and I didn't really realize that till I got out. But then I went to her. Like, very, very, like, cautiously, mind you. I went to her, and I was like, I can't move my hand. And she was like, show me. So I tried moving, you know, said fingers. They weren't moving, but more blood was coming out, and she started to panic some more. So she tried the crazy glue again. I'm just like, it's not working. It's not working. My hand isn't moving. So she makes my brother take me to the hospital. And before, but before this, she's just like, okay, we have to come up with a lie. So I, I came up with, you know, I'm trying to, like, rearranged the top of my closet and the shelf fell I fell with it hit some scissors on the way down and that's how it happened they stitched me up I think I'm good right turns out I need surgery so I got my first ever surgery on my hand <sighs> um and I, I had to start going to rehab um so that I could like learn how to use my hand again essentially and it doesn't 
you can't really tell now, but like, you see how I can do this with my left hand? I can't go past this point with this hand. Like, I have a bad hand. I spent my 16th birthday, like, every morning I had to wake up fucking at like 5, 6 in the morning because I had a 7.30 appointment every day before school. This was in high school, so I had to keep a brave face. Like, I wasn't, you know... There's so much, there's so much. Like, I just... <laughs> the first time I thought about committing suicide, I was like five, six, seven. Because we lived on like the seventh floor in our apartment building, I thought like, I'm just gonna put a chair, like I did it, like I physically like took a chair from the dining room, put it up to the railing and I looked over and I'm just like, my only thought was, if I fall and I don't die, I don't want to be stuck with like, no legs for the rest of my life or like, you know, disfigurement, so I, that's like the only reason I didn't jump. I look insane. I look insane. I can't find it in me to take shit from anybody because like, I've gone through it. I've gone through it. Like, that, that was. This incident was when I was like, I have to get out of here. If I don't leave, she'll kill me. If I don't do something, like, she'll kill me. So, I left.